Hey guys, so two weeks ago we started the I2P series on the channel and blog, and today we're going to be going into I2P out proxies, which will allow us to use I2P, take advantage of the anonymity of the I2P network, but then also utilize that to connect out to actual normal clearnet internet websites. This is a topic that I wanted to cover in its own dedicated video because there are some things to keep in mind and we're going to go over those today. The other day we just covered introducing I2P Plus which I felt was the perfect way to basically pique the interest of users who may have been intimidated by setting up I2P in the past. I2P Plus makes it very easy. Check out my video on that first before watching this one. And after you finish that video, go ahead and begin this video again. So I'm also writing a blog post on this, on I2P and Alproxy, because I want to leave screenshots and other descriptive parts that can help you along with the process. So as we can see here is the garlic message. Users of I2P also act as the routers helping to pass traffic through the tunnel. Those who missed the video may want to know that the garlic routing is similar to Tor's onion routing, but it does have some differences, and some of those are listed here. Now, for the I2P out proxy, there is a difference with Tor network where you'll have exit nodes that make the connection to the clearnet sites. Well, with I2P, this network was never designed to connect to the normal internet, and that's something worth mentioning. There are providers out there like Stormy Cloud and Incognet that have donated free out proxy node services. So make sure you don't abuse this. You know, don't connect or do anything illegal with this information. You know, I'm providing this information. Just uh, if you want to support those out proxy providers, you can do so. In fact, Stormy Cloud actually accepts donations. I think it's important to recognize these providers who are offering a real community service for all I2P users. They make the actual connection to the website. So if you want these out proxy providers to stick around, don't abuse out proxies. I'm going to be covering today how you can set up your own little I2P profile in LibreWolf. Now, if you want to follow along exactly, you don't need LibreWolf, but if you would like to follow along exactly, go to LibreWolf.net and you can find installation instructions there. For those unaware, LibreWolf is actually a Firefox fork that is based on enhancements in privacy. So it has you know, the telemetry removed, things like that. So it's a nice safe browser to try out. And once you have LibreWolf installed, the next thing you're going to want to do is start up your I2P Plus or whichever I2P you have downloaded. But today we're going through I2P Plus because like I mentioned, the whole point in this I2P series is to get new people interested in I2P. So I want to make everything as simple as possible. So once you've installed I2P Plus, which is covered in the last video, then you'll simply run dot slash I2P router start like you see here. Then it's going to start it up and it'll be running at this process ID. So if you ever want to kill the process, you simply do kill minus nine and then you just copy and paste the process ID there and you'll be able to end the I2P process anytime. And it won't start at boot, so you don't have to worry about being part of the network unless you start it yourself. So once you have I2P plus start it up and it's ready and building its connections you may notice firefox will open the home of the router console it all depends on your system what the default browsers are so we're gonna not be using firefox today we're using librewolf but you are welcome to use firefox or any other browser you want so i'm opening up librewolf and next, what I want you to do is create an I2P profile. What this is going to do is it's like putting all of your I2P activities in a separate box. So instead of sharing the same window where you may be typing and sharing information that links directly to you, instead, we're creating a separate browser profile. So all of that I2P activity will be relegated to this alternative I2P profile. So to do so, 
The next thing you're going to do before we begin configuring the browser is we're going to do create a new profile. So go to about colon profiles. Once you're there, go to create a new profile. And next, we'll hit the next button. And then what I'm going to name it is I2P browsing. Now this is going to help me ensure that everything stays in the I2P browsing box. I'm also going to give you some tips as well to how to label your browser so that you can recognize them. Say you have two different profiles open at the same time. Maybe one is for normal browsing. The other one is for your I2P browser profile. So both will be in its own individual box. Then hit finish and you have a new browsing profile. After this, you can launch it in a new browser window. And that's where we're going to configure our I2P settings. So once you've done that, you can then go to about config and look up proxy. So what you want to do is go to media dot peer connection ice proxy only we're going to set that to true and once we've done that we can then set our proxy settings inside our new i2p browser profile go down to the bottom in about preferences go to settings go to manual proxy configuration we're also going to use this for https so make sure you have this checked off it's going to save you some typing then, after you set 127.0.0.1, .0 .0 we're going to set port 4444. Then we're going to hit OK. And at this point, we now have I2P configured for our web browser. It's as easy as that. Very simple to do. And I'm going to also, after opening the router console, I'm going to show you how you can optionally use containers for the specific purpose of labeling your I2P tabs. See, as you notice, this browser looks identical to the other one. Now, there's also extensions and there's other options for changing the color of the browser, and I, I will probably go into that at a later time. But for the moment, let's go ahead and do containers. Let's go ahead and do search for containers. So at this point, we have containers. We've enabled container tabs. We go to settings, and then we can add a new container, I2P tab. After that, we'll hit done. In fact, let me, let me change the color of that. And then what we can do is, this is a completely optional part. You don't have to use these containers at all. You're in a completely separate browser profile dedicated to I2P. So this part is all about recognizing. It's something I decided to try out. So it's something we can just simply recognize our I2P browser tabs by simply leaving open a new tab with the I2P tab container to label it. And that helps us ensure that we know which browser we have open so we don't overshare information that could be linked to us. So the next thing you're going to want to do is go to 127.0.0.17667. And what that's going to do, it's going to bring us to the actual router console. So it's going to say, warning, potential security risk ahead. Of course, you're going to accept this risk because we know exactly what it is. So now we're in I2P Plus once again. We can take a look around and take a look at my previous video to see some of the sites of interest. Of course, you know, what's great about I2P Plus, it comes with all of these ready to use websites, these I2P websites known as EAP sites. So you can simply click on them and you could right click and do open a I2P container tab. Now what this is and what I've already described is this is going to route you through one of the free and public providers of the I2P out proxies and that would be Stormy Cloud and Incognet. Like I mentioned they both have services and donations. Check out their website see if you can support them and help this continue into the future because it's a really unique way to diversify our tools. Tor Browser, still highly recommend Tor Browser and Tor Network. I still use that on a daily basis and I encourage people to use Tor for most things. But there are things you may want to use I2P for and we'll talk more about in coming videos. So the next thing you're going to do, now that we're in our router console, we're going to ensure we have 
additional, all of our out proxies added. So we'll go and open this in an I2P tab. As you can see, it's labeled I2P tab, so I don't mix it up. We look down here to see the status, and you notice it's a green star. That means it's ready to go. It's ready to use. So we're already ready to use Stormy Cloud's default out proxy using what's built in the I2P Plus settings. Now we can also optionally add the Incognet's I2P out proxy. So what we're going to do is make sure we have all of the known out proxies added to our configuration, our client tunnel. So let's go ahead and hit I2P HTTP proxy. Once you do that, inside your tunnel manager first, and you'll want to make sure you have both of these. By default, I believe it only has the Stormy Cloud one, but you can go ahead and add this one as well. And I'll, I have this on the blog post, so you'll be able to copy and paste that and also leave it in the description. And then you're going to want to also make sure you have both of those on SSL out proxies. It's good to diversify your out proxies, you know, and if one goes down, it can utilize the other one. And it's just a, a good practice to have more than one available. And once you've done that, go ahead and hit save and you'll be good to go. And we'll go ahead back to our router page and you'll be able to check the status of it by this. So if it's yellow, it'll say building tunnels. And that's what these are known as. Whereas on Tor, they're known as circuits. On I2P, they're known as tunnels. Another thing you may want to do, since a lot of I2P sites, just like the Onions, there's already end-to-end -end encryption built into I2P. And so you don't need HTTPS at all. In fact, if you enable HTTPS only, which is by default in LibreWolf, you're going to see something like this, setting secure site is not available. But it is, in fact, a secure site, and it is available. But because of the fact you have HTTPS only set in your settings, it's going to give you this little bit of a warning here. So we'll go ahead and hit click to continue. And what we can do is from here, we can then go look up HTTPS and we can then in our new I2P profile only put don't enable HTTPS only mode. And then we won't get those warnings anymore. And we don't really need to worry about it for the .i2p websites. And as you can see, I've now made it to dark.net. So there's various different websites built right into I2P+. And you can also utilize it to connect to the normal internet. So say you want to anonymously browse my blog. You can do that right on I2P, whereas Cloudflare happens to block the uh, the tour exit nodes and so you won't be able to do so there but the nice thing is you can use the i2p out proxy to view the blog anonymously and as you can see it's loading right now we can also check our ip address Uh-oh, it looks like I leaked my IP. Not really. This is actually the IP address of the out proxy being used at this moment. And what's nice about I2P Plus is it comes ready to go. You have everything you need already set up. All you need to do is set your browser proxy settings, and I suggest making that I2P browser profile. Hit the bell so you don't miss anything, and we will cover more on I2P in coming videos.